Hello everyone. Welcome to Chemazon Complete Chemistry. So in our today's video, we are going to see some more important stereochemical terms. So this is a part two of the same topic. We had already seen some of the important terms like chem, like stereospecificity, stereoselectivity. Then we saw enantial selectivity, enantial enantial specificity, diastereoselectivity, and diastereospecificity. So in this video, we are going to see what is chemoselective, what is the meaning of regiospecific, and what is regioselective. And this is one of the reactions that we are going to see. So let us first understand what is the meaning of chemoselective reagent. So chemo, chemo means chemical reaction. Okay, chem, chemo means chemical reaction. Okay, so a reagent that is selective towards one particular chemical reaction or we can say one particular functional group. Okay, a reagent that reacts with one particular functional group in presence of other functional groups. As you can see here, the definition of a chemoselective reagent is written. Chemoselective reagent reacts selectively with one functional group in presence of other functional groups. Now let us understand the meaning of this with the help of an example. Suppose I have this uh, reactant cycloalkane and here I have an ester group. Okay, this is RCOOR that is ester group and I have a ketone group. Now this if I react it with a very strong reducing agent like lithium aluminum hydride, what will happen? Lithium aluminum hydride reduces both ester as well as ketone group. Okay, so what will be the product that we will be getting? The primary, the ketone will be reduced to secondary alcohol and the ester will be reduced to primary alcohol, CH2OH. So this basically reduces by donating H minus and that is it is a hydride donor. Okay, now if I add another reagent that is sodium borohydride, so it is it again donates hydride ion and reduces by donating H minus ion. Now, NaBH4, if you see the reactivity of NaBH4, it will definitely react with ketone. Okay, ketone to form secondary alcohol. It will reduce ketone to secondary alcohol, but it does not reduce ester. Okay, so this reagent, NaBH4, we can call it as it is a chemoselective reagent. Okay, it is called as a chemoselective reagent. Why it is called chemoselective reagent? Because here you can see there are two functional groups that is present. One is a ketone and another is an ester functional group. But it reacts only with ketone uh, but it does not react with ester. So it selectively reduces ketone. We can say it selectively reduces ketone. That is why it is called as a chemoselective reagent. And what about LiAlH4? It reduces both the function groups. So we can call this as non-selective reagent. Okay, it is not a selective reagent. It reacts with both the function groups. Okay, so here what is going to be the product? The product is going to be this will remain as it is. Ester group will not be reduced and ketone will be reduced to secondary alcohol. This is which alcohol? Secondary alcohol. This carbon is attached to two other carbons. This is also a secondary alcohol. This is a primary alcohol. Okay, so this was an example of a chemoselective reagent. Now let us see what is the meaning of a regioselective reagent. Okay, so what is a regioselective reagent? A regioselective reagent is a reagent. that selectively that selectively attacks at particular selectively attacks at a specific okay or we can say at a particular site or region particular site or region out of the Two or more possible sites. Two or more possible sites. Okay, again, let us break down this word. Region, regio, regio means region. Okay, region or we can say site. Site or 
position in a molecule selective again selective means the same that here we are again going to get two products one will be a major product and another will be a minor product okay one will be a major product and another is going to be a minor product okay it is the same as we had seen in enantio selective and diastereo selective there also we had got both the structures one was major and another was a minor product diastereo selective now let us see the example of a regio selective reagent example of a regio selective reagent regioselective reagent okay suppose we have this alkene that is propene ch2 double bond ch ch3 this is which reactant this is propene and this we have to react it with halogen let's say we are reacting with hcl Okay, so in this reaction, we know this is a electron rich species because of the pi bond. So this is a, this is what, this is going to be a nucleophile. This is electron rich. So it is going to be a nucleophile and this is going to be an electrophile. So we know that the arrow always starts from a nucleophile and it ends at an electron deficient species that is an electrophile. So how do you draw an arrow? This will attack the electron deficient H plus and this is delta plus, this is delta minus, and this will open up like this. So now there are two possibilities of formation of carbocation. Which species will be formed? Carbocation. So one of the possibilities CH2, CH, CH3, and we get a carbocation here. This is which carbocation? This is a secondary carbocation. This carbon is attached to two other carbons. Okay, so this is a secondary carbocation. Okay, and there is another possibility. Another possibility is we get a primary carbocation. CH2, sorry, CH3, CH2. Here we will get a carbocation CH2 plus CH2, CH3. Okay, so now you can see this is what this carbon containing the positive charge is attached to another only one other carbon so this is a primary carbocation now which is more stable secondary is going to be more stable we know the stability order is tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary greater than methyl or this is sometimes also called a zero degree okay so secondary carbocation is more stable because here there are two electron donating groups two electron donating methyl groups Whereas here there is only one R group that will be stabilizing the carbocation. Okay, so this is more stable. And this is what? This is less stable carbocation. Now, last step is what? Last step is we add the Br minus that we have removed. Okay, Br minus will attack. Similarly, here also Br minus will attack. And we will get two products. One, one is this, two bromopropane, and another is a one bromopropane. So this is going to be the major product. Why? Because the carbocation formed here is more stable. And in the second case, carbocation is less stable. So this is minor product. So you can see how the reagent is attacking at two different sites. This is an one site, this is another site. Okay, so there are two different sites or region that are possible. So at one time it attacks only one particular site, but overall in the reaction you can see both of the products are formed. One is a major product and another is the minor product. That is why it is called a selective. Okay, regio because there are two different regions of reaction possible or two different sites of reaction possible. Okay, so this was the example of a regio selective reagent. Now, let us see what is a regio specific region. So, as you can see, regio means region. And specific means only one particular product will be formed. Only one product will be formed. That is, only one site is attacked completely. That is 100%. This, this can also be called as 100% regio selective. 
okay because there is only one product that is formed only one product is formed okay what is the example of a region specific reagent uh, let us see that suppose i have this alkene again let us take propene now there are two uh, different set of reagents i will write one is HgOAc twice. This is called as oxymercuration and NaBH4 demercuration. This reaction is called as what? It is called as oxymercuration. The first step is oxymercuration. And the second step is demercuration. So this is called as oxymercuration, demercuration reaction. We we'll see the product. Let us also write down the other set of reagent. This is BH3 THF hydroboration and second set of reagent is H2O2 and base NaOH. Okay, so this is also a name reaction. This is called as first step is hydroboration. Hydro means hydrogen and boration means Boron. So this compound is being added. So that is why it is called a hydroboration BH3 boron trihydride and second step is oxidation. So hydroboration oxidation. So what is the difference? In both the cases, what is the reagent that will be added? The reagent that will be added is water. Here also we will be adding water. Here also we will be adding water. The only difference, the important difference is in the first step, oxymercuration, demercuration, we follow Markov-Nikov rule. Okay, that is why the the site attack, the reagent attacking the site will be different. And in the second case, that is hydroboration oxidation, we follow which rule? We follow anti-Markov-Nikov rule. Okay, now it is important that we know what is the meaning of anti-Markov-Nikov and Markovnikov rule. So let us see in short what is the meaning of Markovnikov rule. Anti Markovnikov is exactly opposite of that. Okay, so what is the Markovnikov rule? Markovnikov rule states that in the addition of a unsymmetrical alkene, sorry, in the addition of unsymmetrical reagent to an unsymmetrical alkene, unsymmetrical reagent, what is the meaning of unsymmetrical reagent? There are two parts of the reagent. Okay, suppose I write water and I write hydrogen. So here you can see this is delta minus, this is delta plus. So this is both the positive and negative parts are different. So this is called an unsymmetrical reagent. Unsymmetrical reagent. And here both are same. So this is called as a symmetrical reagent. So what do we require? We require an unsymmetrical reagent. Okay, if symmetrical reagent is present, then the attack can take place at any of any one of the two carbon forming the double bond. So in addition of unsymmetrical reagent to unsymmetrical alkene. Now what is the meaning of an unsymmetrical alkene? Let us see that. So here if I Draw this alkene CH3, 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 CH3. So here you can see on both the sp2 hybridized carbon, that is carbon forming the double bond. Here also there are two CH3 groups. Here also there are two CH3 groups. So this is called a symmetrical alkene. Okay, what will be an example of an unsymmetrical alkene? Suppose here there are two hydrogen that is unsubstituted, and here one hydrogen is substituted by methyl group. So here you can see there are two hydrogens that are directly attached, whereas here there is only one hydrogen that is directly attached. So this is called an unsymmetrical alkene. So the condition is alkene should be unsymmetrical, reagent should also be unsymmetrical. Okay, so then what is the rule? The negative part of the reagent, negative part of the reagent add to the carbon adds to the carbon which carbon the carbon forming double bond or sp2 hybridized carbon adds to the carbon of alkene having less hydrogen that is very important having 
less hydrogen if if direct which hydrogen the directly attached hydrogen okay having less hydrogen which means it is more substituted what is the meaning of that so if you see this alkene here this carbon is directly attached to two hydrogen and this carbon is attached to only one hydrogen so which is the carbon containing less alkene uh, less hydrogen this carbon this carbon has less hydrogen it has only one hydrogen why because one the other hydrogen is substituted so and here there is no substitution that is why this carbon that i have circled in red is the carbon having less hydrogen and it is more substituted what will be anti markovnikov rule anti markovnikov rule will be exactly anti markovnikov rule is exactly the uh, same only the thing is difference will be the negative part will attack at the alkene having more hydrogen okay the first part is going to remain the same that reagent should be unsymmetrical alkene should be unsymmetrical and the the rest half is exactly opposite that is negative part of the reagent adds to the carbon having more hydrogen or less substituted carbon carbon having more hydrogen which carbon sp2 hybridized carbon or carbon forming the double bond carbon having more hydrogen or it is less substituted Okay, now we can solve the previous reaction. So in oxymercuration, demercuration, I told that we follow Markovnikov rule. And in water, which is the negative part, this is delta minus, this is delta plus because oxygen is more electronegative. So OH, that is negative part, OH minus will attack at which carbon? So these are the two carbons. So here, if you see, there is one hydrogen. Here, there are two hydrogens. Okay, so where it will attack? OH minus will attack at the carbon having less hydrogen. That is this one. So what will be the product formed in oxymercuration, demercuration? It will be this CH two H. Okay, so negative part adds to the carbon having less hydrogen. And in hydroboration, oxidation, what will be the product? The so OH minus will attack at the carbon having more hydrogen so here the product will be this one propanol here it is two propanol this is two propanol this is one propanol so here you can see only one product is formed this is a separate reaction okay this oxymercuration demercuration is one different reaction only one product is formed Okay, and similarly, hydroboration oxidation also you can see only one product is formed. That is why it is called as specific. Specifically, only one product is formed in one particular reaction. So here we come to the end of this video. I hope you have understood the meaning of the terms. That is chemoselective, regioselective, and regiospecific. Thank you so much.